Hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel, Bible Beauties and Bible Bros. If any of you are here, um, we're just so pumped about yeah. this, about this live stream. I mean, it's not like a joyful topic to discuss, but <laughs> I am excited to um, have the conversation and to have the conversation with my boo, with my love, with my mm -hmm. co-host, Ms. Trina <laughs> Berkeley herself. Um, before we get into all the things, would you just um, tell us who you are, how we can find you? If y'all haven't been rocking with me for a while, then you should already know who this is. But I will let her tell you about herself. Hi, guys. Sorry, my eye is running. Allergies are running rampant over here. I am Shayna Berkeley. I am a stylist. I call myself your neighborhood stylist, your stylist next door. Here to teach you how to rock the trends in your real world. My handle is at the fashion chase. So if you guys are looking for fashion inspiration that you can actually wear, follow me over at the fashion chase. Also, yes, and I are co-host for a show that's going to be coming back really soon called Girl, I Got Questions TV. And that's the place where we explore lots of questions that we go through as women and society and Christians and friends. So lots of fun things happening. Also, Yaz and I work together. Um, I run a program called The Academy in Nashville. I teach entrepreneurship. So I teach black and brown entrepreneurs. We call them underestimated entrepreneurs. How to plan, start, and grow their own small businesses. So a lot of things going on. Lots of fun. And glad to be here on this topic. Yes. And so um, so if y'all see me making business boss moves, you can think, thank Shana. Oh, if y'all yeah. see me looking good while I'm making business boss moves, you can thank Shana. Um, I just cannot adore her any more than you. I do. Um, she definitely keeps your girl looking fly. Now, some now if you see a little fashion mistake, then that's me. <laughs> I take full responsibility. But if I look yeah, I can't be I can't be uh, responsible for <laughs> I, I put the outfits together, but she got to wham the way we went. No, you know, yeah, <laughs> she she be fly. Don't let her get you twisted. I have the Instagram post. I'm like, okay, I see you. Hey, it started. Um, Shana was key in bringing, bringing it back, bringing confidence back for me. And I'm forever grateful for you for, for that. Um, yeah, so let's get into, actually, I'm saying let's get into this topic. If you have no idea what we're talking about, why you clicked the thumbnail, why you're here, let me at least tell you what it is that we are going to discuss today. We are talking about colorism, um, yeah, which is the politics of skin tones. The You know, we have racism, we have ageism, we have ableism, so many different isms. And I feel like colorism often gets lost in the conversation, but it is it is a real thing. So we're going to get real, real about mm -hmm. a real topic here shortly. Before I do that, I do want to do some other housekeeping stuff. Shana has told you how to follow her, find her, subscribe to her. She has a YouTube channel. You know, I'm here for the YouTubers yeah. um, at the Fashion Chase if you need some inspiration. Also, as she mentioned, we have a show together a youtube channel together so you want to subscribe there is girl i got questions tv sorry to be redundant i was just talking to real girl food or earlier today Hi, um, girl. in the chat hey boo <laughs> um and we were talking about which y'all go to her channel and subscribe too because um there's a little surprise on friday but we were saying how last year we started real girl food or at the top of the year we were so consistent. Like <laughs> week, we did not miss a week, no matter what our show went on. And then COVID. Yes. COVID. But it, it's all right, y'all. The show is coming back. Um, so those are the places I want you to go subscribe and follow. If you have not subscribed to my channel, then definitely subscribe. While you're here in the conversation, click the like. It just allows you to, to invite more people to the conversation as we are having it. And, you know, I pray that people are watching the replay. Hello, if you Hi. are, welcome. Um, <laughs> but if you click the like now, then we can... Um, have more people, more women invited while we're actually having the dialogue. A couple more things and we're going to get into it. But um, you can subscribe. Like You can also become a member of my channel. Just click the join button underneath. And then throughout this live stream, there's a super chat at the bottom of the screen. So if God puts on your heart to just um, plant a seed of whatever amount, you can do that while we are live 
or you can um or you can become a member all the all the things um all right so but let's let's get into why we are here um and i just want to share why i want to have this conversation not only is it real it is personal to me because as a fair skin, as a lighter skinned woman, because I don't, I never even used the term fair, but I think that's more politically accepted, whatever, who knows. But as a light skinned woman, I have always felt that I cannot have the conversation. I can't speak on colorism. I can't, I can't talk about skin tones. And sometimes it feels like what I imagine. I don't want to compare this. My white friends feel about not being able to talk about to say much about like white privilege or against white privilege and all the things that they must feel when going, y'all, I cannot figure this out, that they must feel going into conversations about race. Like I feel that when it comes to colorism. So I wanted to have the conversation and because, you know, saying they going to keep telling me I can't talk about what I want to talk about. You know what I'm saying? If God tells me to be silent, I will, but uh, uh, that's not this. And, um, I felt more of a sense of urgency just in the last six years. I know that sounds like a long time, but just after, you know, <laughs> it is a long time. After having um, my oldest daughter, Addison, who's the oldest of my twins, she is a brown girl. And um, we'll get into just some experiences I've had with that, being a lighter skinned woman with a brown skinned baby girl. She's so beautiful. Um and but as these cover, I have these conversations with Addie as, as people make comments regarding her. I'm like, look, there's a sense of urgency. I have to talk about this. I have to do my part to advocate for the ending of colorism. So that's why I want to have the conversation again. I'll share more about my experience as we talk. I'll share some statistics, but we really just want it to be an organic conversation. Right. And with that, um, Shana, will you start us off and just yeah. what what has been your experience with colorism? Yeah, I am. I'm brown. You know, I'm like literally in the middle of being light skin and dark skin. I, I'm brown. And so um, at least from my experience, I really haven't had much colorism. I can kind of identify or self-identify as I see fit. For example, there's a song that say, you know, she found and she chocolate. I identify, okay? He may be talking about somebody who look more like Naomi Campbell, but I'm self-selecting, okay? <laughs> um, and then, you know, if, if it's something to say, maybe not yellow bone or nothing like that, but, you know, if it's something that just generally talk about being black, honey, I self-identify there too. But I think that um, Colorism is similar because light skinned women do have, and and probably brown skinned women. I would, I would say more so. You know, light skinned women do have an allyship to darker skinned women that may not feel that may feel akin to white people who may have an allyship to black people. Right? There's certain things, certain privileges, certain. And when we say privileges, um, I think we should absolutely specify that it may not feel like a privilege. And this is based on the perception of white people to black people, not always intraracial, um, but it does speak to how race relations between specifically black and white, but maybe either other races and black people create an internal hierarchy. And these things were intentional. These things were um, systemic. These things have been placed in our culture from the beginning of time, you know, black women, I read this somewhere. I'm not a doctor, y'all, so don't hold me to it. But I read somewhere that but she I, is an attorney. I mean, I have a doctorate. Right. But I'm not a doctor. OK, honey, I don't. If something happened to you on a plane, you better call Tyrone, not me, because I can't help you. Mm -hmm. uh, but I read that black women are the only um, race of women who carries a, a certain number of genes in the sense of you can have two dark or brown skinned people and their baby can come out light because our race carries both dominant and recessive genes and they can pop out for different reasons at different times. And so we have so much of a spectrum. I mean, we can be blonde hair, blue eye, but we also can be um, brown eye, super dark hair, long hair, short hair, curly hair. Like we really run the gamut of the type of people that we can create, even if they don't necessarily fall into what your mother and father specifically look like. And so that has been um, something that we fought back against because 
our parents watch the imitation of life, right? Your parents can look very different than what you look like and you still have a heart and affinity to them. But then you have white people saying that you're better than them and giving you things um, that your parents have never even known were available or creating this hierarchy, even in your own family. And so we fought against that. Um, for decades and we continue to fight against that and it's a necessary conversation and a worthy cause but in the midst of the cause I want to make sure that we don't get lost in the fact that we have been resisting this hierarchy that has been trying to be imposed on us since the beginning of time and um, it's not something that we've allowed to overtake us but it is something that has penetrated us um, in ways that needs to be illuminated, right? The Bible tells us that these these dark places that God illuminates them so we can then work together and move forward. And colorism is just one of those places that Satan tries to create discord. Um, but we have, as a community, really rejected that, I think, holistically. And then we may have some, some work to do in our hearts and our minds to really make that a reality in our lived experience. Yeah. So a couple of things that I would love to hear from some of the women in the chat if you have, if you agree that we've done a decent job at not um, allowing this this creation to to plague our communities or to plague our relationships, if you feel like we do a decent job combating what has um, existed since the creation of of race. Um, because I'm not sure where I stand on that. Like, yes, I think for the m most part, all is well, right? Like we, we foster relationships across lines of difference as it pertains to skin tones. We like, we do what we do. We support one another. It's all about like, we have pride in who we are as black women. We support one another and lift each other up. Yes. Come with it. Um, but there are those pockets of the demographic or, um, pop pockets of society where that's not the case and women are not as supportive. I um Stacey Abrams quoted or she said she talks about how race is a construct and all these the spectrum of colors is was created and systemic to your point but um that black people have internalized it and made it vicious. And that really resonated with me because it's not I, it's not an outside thing anymore. Right. I had a couple of white women, some of my white friends respond on Instagram and say that like two women were like, they, they didn't know that this was an issue or they found out later in life that this wasn't ever, this was still an issue or that it was ever an issue. Meaning that like white people don't, it's not like, Oh, Yasmin is light skin. Shana is Brown. It's like, they have no, right. They like, they black. Yeah, we are black. Right. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you go. No, I was going to say, I mean, that's a twofold issue. If we're talking about external. First of all, white people, skin tone wise, you know, they they get a tan by choice. It's not that they're born with these different spectrums. And you know what? Again, I'm a doctor. I may be wrong. But from my experience, the white folks that I've seen, they they're white. Now, if they have a little color in them, then that's a telltale sign that they have some, some, um, you know, they mix. So they may have some diversity in their background that has given them this. But a white mom and a white daddy gonna make a white baby, right? A dark skin mom and a dark skin baby daddy can have a spectrum of colors in their kids. That's why. I, that's why I started that with saying that we carry so many different dominant and recessive genes that you're not gonna be able to know. We even have things internally like if they is get darker, they're gonna be brown, right? There are places and spaces that we even identify their skin tone. And so, I mean, I think it's not an interracial problem for them. But then racism doesn't give you that same spectrum to be like. Oh, I like the light skin one. They may not know they identify with that, but they see themselves more so in that. Or they may see themselves more so in their features. I have a friend, and, and it was completely joking. Of course, you can joke about things, but I have a lot of bad allergies. And he has a wider nose than I do. And he's like, I don't have allergies because I got a black nose. I'm like, what you trying to say about my nose? You know? But you know, even joking like that of where like we have different, the way that our features show up as black people is, is very diverse. And so I would say we are, I, we maybe internalize it, but at least 
African Americans, you know, I can't speak to the African experience about colorism, but we didn't create it. Cause child, we was all enslaved together. Right. We was all, you know what I'm saying? Now, but think about from what we know of history and what was documented, the slaves that were chosen to be the the mates of the slave masters, they were chosen for one of two reasons. One, either that they were really fertile, so right, they can keep making babies. They don't want to have to keep buying slaves. They wanted to now breed them. And, you know, that was um, a, a cruel, inhumane, but oftentimes utilized way to breed them. So either she real fertile or she's the closest to what I'm used to, what I'm attracted to in white women. And therefore she's now my my other girl right and that usually translated to being light-skinned that's usually how they decided where you were working when you were younger we have to remember the slaves started working when they was kids five and six elementary school kids you're not going by intellect you're not going by strength you're having to find some way to differentiate and gender and skin tone were often used to create and assign places where kids would work and then maybe if they grew up and they had an extra you know extra this or were good at something else and they maybe moves around throughout the plantation. So it was definitely something that was created for us because child, we were struggling together. You think we was like, ah, you're a slave, but you're light skinned. So you can't escape with Harriet come back. No, we get right. it going. You hear me? Right. I definitely, um, I, I want to speak to so much of that. Let me respond to, yeah. um, let me just read these comments real quick. Daily Dale says, I would say it's gotten better in recent years, but there are still many instances of colorism that have been ingrained in us. I completely agree. I think right. this this wave of like melanin, like, yes, black woman is definitely um, new is like, but it's great and wonderful. But I definitely think it is more in recent history that this has been been the thing. Now I'm going to say something later that might contradict that. Real Girl Food World says, I think, I guess I can put these on the screen. I forgot I'm in StreamYard. Um, I'm still going to read it because that's what I'm used to do, y'all. It's She said, I think individually we may, but as a collective Black population, I don't think we have done a good job of that, meaning to not allow colorism mm -hmm. to impact our relationships with one another and just how we interact, how we value people, etc. Um, and then let me clean something up. God got your girl. Um, so when I mentioned that my white sisters, a couple of them re responded to the Instagram post, they were simply saying that they didn't realize colorism was an issue. And then my takeaway or that they learned about it later in life. And I have a similar experience with realizing that in the Latina community, they have the same hierarchy of colors and is is probably a little more violent um than or just overt yeah than it is even for black americans but yeah i didn't realize that until in high school and so a couple of white women reached out and shared similar experiences they weren't saying that like oh y'all just black to me they were just saying then was <laughs> i feel like from yeah. my experience white people see me as black there is no right oh you're a light black it is like no you black right. um which is like great for me i right. you know no no complaints over thank here you. thank you um, yes 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 um and even then you you have darker skinned women being um fetish or fetishized mm -hmm. or after them because they have a fetish agreed so let's let's go to this whole this slavery point that you make so we were taken from Africa. And so we have women, dark skinned women here. So we don't get light skinned babies and women whom masters could or whom white men could procreate with until like this has been going on for generations, for years, for decades, for some time. Right. So in the beginning, everybody was dark skinned. When they started raping lighter skinned women or you know, taking lighter skinned people and putting them in the house to work as the mistress, as the maid to the wife. It's because by that point, light skinned babies have been created through rape and white skinned babies had grown up to become mature to then have more light skinned ba or lighter complexion babies, whatever. Um, I just want, I don't want to like miss the fact that at first, to your point, like everybody was just a dark skinned woman. She has a baby that happens through rape. She has a baby that is a lighter skin complexion 
that baby is taken from her and put in the house. And so we just have so many issues happening at this one. This woman has been raped. Like, let's acknowledge that. She's had her child taken away from her, which we know is common in slavery, families being separated, sold, split apart um, for various reasons. But in that, you're also, the third thing is that you're also creating this, this bitterness, this hatred, this like, you left me, you betrayed me. Re like, people are aware of the reality of like, this is slavery and we're being forced to work in this way. But despite the reality, it's like, you're still experiencing yeah. my mom is just in the field. Yeah, I'm inside this house and I'm being molested. I'm being taken advantage of. I'm being worked. So you just are building these generational curses between light skinned people and dark skinned people because you're thinking, well, my mom isn't saving me. My dad isn't saving me or I'm separated. My mom was raped and is aware and allowing these things to happen to me inside of this house because you better believe that. Not only were women who were in the fields were raped, the people in the house were raped, the kids were molested. I mean, so many ills were taking place and we can't we can't negate that or neglect to acknowledge that. So I what I'm getting at is from there we get this psyche of of division, of discord, of hatred, of like side eyeing the other complexion and just disconnection and like this identity of like who in the world am I? I'm not treated like my mom who's in the field and being beaten and raped and all type of horrible things, but I'm not equal to these white people that I'm serving and I'm having to do at who I'm having to work for and who do beat me, who do treat me horribly. It's like, where do I stand? Um, yeah, I think a lot of at least some of my experience and some of the comments that I or like it is the catalyst for some of my own ideology and trying to figure things out and find my place in life and navigate. And I know that also aligned with a lot of women who who responded on on Instagram. For sure. Yes. Yes. Daily Dale. Um, yep. Mistaken as Latina. I get it. Yes, all of that, all of that. So let me share. I want to go, since I've been alluding to the comments from Instagram, I actually just want to read some of them now. And you guys bear with me as I do that. If anything resonates with you, go ahead. You can, you know, put that in the, put that in the comments. So let me just start with um, some of these. Um my Latina sis said, not a dark skin Latina, but colorism is definitely in our Latin culture. Um, someone said, at least you, you'll you pass the paper bag test. And we know that paper bag test was just like, if you are lighter than the paper bag, then you can pass, then you can have certain privileges. I was listening to an interview with Nick Cannon and he was saying how you know, HBCUs even would do the brown paper bag test. And if you were darker than the brown paper bag, you weren't allowed to attend various um, HBCUs. So this is like, again, internalized by us. We talking HBCUs, like we all supposed to be in there, black, brown, whatever shade. Um, right. But, you know, at the time, and I believe it was um, Beyonce's dad, whom he was a college athlete and he himself, like at his time in college, that is when the brown paper bag tests were still being implemented, mm -hmm. which is like, okay, he is like older than us, but he is right. alive. Well, he, and yeah, he and our parents age. Right. Yeah. Crazy. I, mean, I, think, I think the black, brown paper bag test is something that, um, well, let me backtrack and say that, I, I mean, again, I'm not African, but they have a, a array of colors. They have an array of cultures and a way of personalities. And so for us as African-Americans, for people who are stripped of that understanding of our African history, they feel, at least for me, very monolithic, like Africa is like Wakanda, when it's really, it's so many different things that will continue to um, unravel for us as we grow and, and learn more and figure out how to meld that African history with our African-American history, because we have created our own culture and our ancestors have um, held on to things that we find sacred. And so we're so grateful for their resilience. But then the, the brown paper bag test definitely shows that we have internalized something that 
but we didn't create it. And we have to be reminded that even amongst those things, right? Even amongst those things, we have resisted. So there's this push and pull regarding colorism. And it should give us what I think hopefully we take away is that we should start seeing, especially our darker sin sisters, with a lot more empathy and a lot more love, a lot more understanding, grace, mercy. Um, even if, because think about the angry black woman, she dark skinned. Now I know, I know way more light skinned folks that give me the real angry black woman energy than dark skinned women, but black, the color black means dark. It means mm -hmm. devoid of color. It means everything negative is the color black. The only good thing is like it's slimming, but everything else is, is a derogatory term. And so when you grow up with even the internalization of the color black being bad, add some color to your life, girl, why are you doing black? Why are you sad? You were black to a funeral, these negative things coupled with our history really is hard to see how it wouldn't be a part of our, our, um, consciousness yeah, exactly yeah. our consciousness and so i think all the things that you're saying and you know obviously i want you to continue to read the comments because those are really important but it helps us to say how can we see a darker skin sister and not be like oh but to say gosh i want to even look at my own biases i want to see how i can support her if i hear a song that i don't think is nothing wrong with saying like light skin red bone if you're describing a person that she likes skin red bone then that's fine the same way you know big lip dark skin blah 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 that's fine too but if the song is saying because i am light skin because i am closer to the white because i have a small waist and a big butt therefore i'm better than you then if we reject these things right then we're moving towards a conversation that says all these shades are beautiful because you don't want to swing the pendulum to say light skin is trash and dark skin is the best the same way that we're making sure to say no 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 Light, you know, dark skin ain't trash and light skin ain't the best. Like we are all in this together. And once we are, the divisiveness is a, a trick of the enemy and a necessary trick of the enemy to stop progression in our culture. And that's what we want to push up against. For sure. And I, I agree that that happens for, for the most part. Um, for sure. I also feel that, you know, we have to start speaking life to those things because for centuries it's been spoken that like dark has a negative connotation. So that's been permeated through earth, through mindsets, through, you know, yeah. perspectives. So it is our job to, to your point, come back that and talk about it. Black is beautiful. Black girl magic. Black is amazing. You know, black is color. And that's not to come against to your point, anything or anybody else is just to say, hey, we need to name this thing because we are trying to combat something that actively still exists, that actively still impacts us. Even though I'm fighting every day to instill confidence and a sense of pride and beauty in my in my daughters and the women whom I work with, um, they're still deeply rooted the impact of of colorism brown not brown um god gotcha girl says brown paper bag test still affects me and put it up here to this day cruel kids when i was growing up and things i've had i'm having to unpack now to learn to love my dark skin at 34 and build my self-esteem um wow. good god yes i'm so glad that you are showing up and showing out because yeah. girl when i saw your personal account i was like ah! I mean, you got a little thumbnail on here, but I never, you know, YouTube. I don't. Yeah, that's a not little. Really yeah. When I saw your Instagram account, I was like, "My goodness, to the skin! You got to come through. It's just so smooth and beautiful." Yeah, beautiful. Uh, yes. Kids and, are cruel, generally, and we was kids, so we probably, you know, I always joke with God, like, "Lord, if I was ever cruel to somebody as a child, please." Forgive me and help them to forgive me. Like we kids be doing some weird stuff. And oh. you're like, you don't get it till you grow up. Like we was terrible. Oh, I know I was rude. I was I was rude. Yeah. When you saw an angry black woman, like I, you know, I've never associated. I know on media and in movies, typically someone who portrays the angry black woman is of darker complexion, which you know, that is us yeah. perpetuating this self-hatred, perpetuating all the stigmas that come with colorism, but like I have been labeled the angry black woman. I am, no matter what space I go into, if I am like obviously the minority in the room, I'm always aware of like, hey, I can't come across as the angry black woman. But like, that is a part of why I'm having this conversation because it 
it doesn't matter. I'm going to be who I am. And mm-hmm. on some days, I mean, I'm angry. And guess what? And in everything I do, I'm a black woman. So right. I'm, I'm not a black, black woman. Fill in the blank. Okay. Right. Happy. I'm, angry, a I'm a black woman. I'm a black right. angry. I'm a black mom. I'm a black friend. I'm a black right. entrepreneur. I'm right. black. Uh, and so no longer will I not speak up to that or not just be my authentic self because I'm worried about the label that it gives um, my race because that's not my issue. That is the issue of the people who are putting the labels on us. Like that's that's them, not me, um, which I'll, I'll get into that. Someone shared that, you know, and I believe Shay from Obedience Podcast mentioned this, but she's often referenced or referred to as Latina or asked if she's Latina. A couple of people spoke to being asked what's their nationality. Um, mm. Do y'all find that offensive? I've never been asked. Ain't nobody, nobody's concerned or confused about mm. mine. And, you know, I think, I don't think that it's necessarily offensive. I, I can't say in my mind, I wouldn't be offended, but I've never had to, um, experience that because to be offended by something i think a they're they're comparing you to something negative and so being latina is not negative being uh, italian is not negative being biracial is not negative i think the the impact by which they're saying it if they're trying to say it in a derogatory way definitely reflects more about them and it may make you question your relationship with them but the question in and of itself doesn't feel offensive, nor does it negate your blackness, right? Like some, mm-hmm. especially my biracial friends whose kids look um, more like the other race than black, they have a, I don't know, a push and pull because people don't identify them as black and therefore they don't necessarily always have the black experience right off the bat. But by the same token, they want to instill a pride about being black and a support about being black and so that's constantly a conversation that they're having to have and as we become more of this interracial melting pot um and i put that in quotes then that may be a conversation for people who may be biracial who may not be visually um identifying with their race but it's plenty of ways to signal your race and it's ways to be allies even if your first defense isn't looking like a part of that race class if that makes sense it does make total sense. I um I wanted to ask because I I know I'm guilty of asking people what like what's your nationality. So I was like I just don't want to be offending anybody if that if that is offensive. But it is a, it's definitely offensive when stated the way you explained, and it's also offensive when you're implying you can't possibly be black. Right. Like you gotta be Latina. You gotta be biracial. And it's like now nah, I am black mama, black daddy. I'm black. Um. So yes. Um, someone said men always went for the super light to caramel girls, but not darker girls like me. A few people, several people have mentioned that they've gotten the you're cute for a dark skinned girl. You're pretty for a dark skinned girl. Yeah. And um, I just want to respond to that because on the opposite side of that, y'all, I just remember in high school, I went out of my way out of my way to work, to do physical labor. Um, you know, Real Girl Food Wars on here. We, so I majored in theater and we would have these great, amazing sets. I can't with this. And yeah, I, I, was, <laughs> I was always like, I worked harder than the boys. Like when it was time to lift the wood, to drill the things, to nail it, to paint, I went well out of my way to do physical labor. And that's because I have internalized, oh, you were light skinned, so you would have worked in the house. Or, you know, light is closer to white. Light, you know, all the things of light being more valuable, more um intelligent, mm-hmm. just all the things that are not are not innately or inherently true. Yeah. And so I just felt the need to prove instead of to be. Yeah, um, because I didn't want to offend my darker skinned friends or I didn't want to offend um, anyone or make anyone feel like, oh, well, Yasmin like is not lifting the 300 pound piece of backdrop. Yeah. Because it's like, never oh, mind. Yeah. that I was like 98 pounds. My <laughs> dark skin. Like, I just, it was like, I just got to prove that this isn't true. And yeah. like along with that, I never to this day. I question like, am I 
like y'all know I'm confident. Like, so don't miss, don't misunderstand here. But I'm like, like I'm confident. I'm gonna be confident whether I meet society's standards of beauty or not. I just I love God. Yeah. I respect God and He's great. But yeah. um I'm like, am I beautiful? Like, do people see me and you don't have to respond to this? Like, am I beautiful or am I just light skinned? Because mm. the the point is oh, you're light-skinned, so you're this and you're that. And it's like, you know, I've just internalized that myself throughout the years where it's like, I don't even know. And mm -hmm. I've fought for so long to try to be the opposite that it's like, I, again, I don't know. A lot of times I try to look a hot mess in certain settings because I don't want to bring attention to myself, to my skin tone, to whatever. I just want to like fade into the background, which all of is a scheme of it. Yeah. No. No. Yeah, God, the way he wants you to be. Go ahead. I know I was gonna say, I think that that is something that we never think about. We, you know, everybody has their plight. Now, I don't know what Jeff Bezos' plight is because he got enough money to pay all our rents, but he got a plight too, right? And so we think about, and I, and I appreciate you being candid about that because honestly, this is the first time I've ever thought about what it feels like to be a light skinned woman and, and want to reject that privilege, not only in solidarity of, right. You know, you, I reject that because I want to be black and I want to be in solidarity with my darker skin sisters, but also just to say like, that is a lie. And that is a hierarchy that I don't want to subscribe to. And it creates self doubt or, or, you know, you don't want to just ride this wave of like, you know, lack of better word privilege. And I think I've never thought about it in that way. And, I, I always thought it would be like, shoot, yeah, you know, <laughs> ride that bandwagon. But when you really don't want to be on this bandwagon that you were born into, like, how do you pivot from that? And how do you find the courage to pivot from that? Because that's not everybody's testimony either. It's very akin to siblings of children who may have a learning disability or maybe handicapped, right? They sometimes have to really be pushed into thriving in their fuller selves because they don't want to be seen as different or outshining or, or, or these other things about their siblings. They really want to be a part of that family and really be a, a team with their sibling. In the same way, you know, we have to, I never thought about how light-skinned women may try to make themselves small or fit into a room or make themselves Instead of saying, I don't know how to lift you up in this culture, what I can control is myself and I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to make myself dimmer. That's not the answer either. Right. At all. We don't, we don't want to, uh, even if we're subconsciously doing that, we want to check that. And I think at least for me being brown, you know, you just kind of be, at least for me, my experience, I was just kind of be, I was just like, it is what it is. I ain't helping none of it. I wouldn't have built the thing, okay? I can break it over, like, put that over there. But I never felt the need to prove my worth. I never felt that my worth was naturally diminished for me just showing up in the world. I always felt like I'm here and then what people see of me as an individual is what they see of me. So I appreciate you sharing that and we love, you know, the comments or ideas about that that aspect as well because we've allowed the darker skinned women not allowed we've celebrated and embraced their testimony but have we even turned to our sisters and asked what is your experience what is your testimony because and what would you how and how do you want to be loved and supported how do right. you want to be celebrated and not it's villainized for something you can't control the same way the dark skinned women can't control their skin tone right um, so it's a full circle moment yeah, there are a few comments that I want to highlight here. But as while we're on that, it's like, you know, to for me to personally, quote unquote, dumb myself down to then highlight as an effort to highlight a darker skinned woman like that in and of itself is insulting and wrong. Right. But it speaks to exactly what I did as a mom when this first started to become apparent to me that like, okay, this is a major issue that I have to deal with. So my twin girls are um, light, Bailey is lighter skinned than Addie and Addie is brown. And so when they were born, you know, people would come visit and they're like, well, how do you know them apart? How, which baby is which baby? Um, and I would say, y'all, and this is so insulting and I'm just being honest. Like the obvious answer is that Bailey is dark, is lighter and Addie is darker. But whenever I said that, I would be like, 
if, if ever I say Addison has a darker skin tone, I would turn around and say, and Bailey is fatter. Like, it was like, oh my gosh, as a light-skinned woman, I just said that a brown baby is dark. I don't want anybody to be offended by that. So let me now insult, if you will, yeah. a lighter skin baby being my baby and in that let me also insult a woman who's more voluptuous and curvy like it i was like okay i gotta get this together because it's problematic on all fronts and it's just again from internalizing oh you think you're better oh you are i uh, you are pretty naturally pretty you have long hair you are smarter you are writer you are because you're whiter and lighter or whatever so yeah. i just it's like always trying to do this fancy footwork to not offend someone or not seem yeah. come across in a negative light, which is just reading. Right. I think we should free ourselves. And as you, I know you think you have all my comments to put on there, but we're going to free ourselves from the fact that being dark skin is a bad word. It's like saying, I remember I used to walk with all white people, work with all white people. And I say, um, you know, which one or who is it that I'm supposed to be meeting with? And they'll say, you know, the guy that's tall and has the green shirt with the right. They would give me so many descriptive words and I say the black guy. Right. You know, because being black is not a bad word. The same way if if it was a bunch of white people, it was a, a white guy and a white girl. I would say which one you would say the girl. Girl right. isn't a bad word. Darker skin isn't a bad word. Black isn't a bad word. Fat isn't a bad word. And if if your intention behind it is to say, oh, you know, maybe chunkier or whatever these colloquialisms. But. If somebody would ask me, my sister has twins, one's a boy, one's a girl. How do you tell them apart? One of them is a boy and one of them is a girl. Mm -hmm. If they were the same mm -hmm. gender and they were different hues, one of them is light skin, one of them is dark skin. That doesn't mean that one is higher than the other. These are ways right. of pulling them apart. Just like I know this lady on Instagram said that her twins were identical twins. And until they became, you know, of a way they have personality, she only dressed one of them in this color the whole time and one of them in this the other color the whole time, right? They were identical. What you wanted to do? Or otherwise, mm. they would have grew up and just been whoever they was been that day. Yeah, right? Yeah, she had right. a method to telling them apart. I want to free us from the fact that using dark and light as descriptive terms are derogatory. They, right. are, they are descriptive. Yep. Yeah, agree wholeheartedly. And like, it's a beautiful thing. Like, I mean, yes, adding darker darker skin and it's gorgeous. Um, all right, let me get to these comments. Um, God Gosh Girl says her husband is my complexion and he would tell her, he always tell her he felt like he needed to prove himself at work because he was light skinned and folks think he had it easy. Precisely. So back to like, I always worked hard, even if, you know, people say that light skinned people are more intelligent or, you know, yeah. whatever, white people are more intelligent and whatever. And all the making true, so it's like no, I it's right, true. which was so not true. But in high school, I like like no, you are gonna see me study, you are gonna see me with all these books, you are gonna see me work hard because it's not my color, it's me like busting my behind. Um, so yeah, just feeling like you always need to work harder. I wanted to talk about Josephine's comment. She says, "How about the fact that I am dark means I shouldn't act so cute?" Hmm. I've seen that. I should kind of know my place in society and not be feminine or beauty. Femininity and beauty has nothing to do with the physical. Hold on. Ah, uh, okay. Has nothing to do with the physical, but how we feel inside. So when a black woman starts looking cute, it's like, who does she think she is? I've seen this. I have had to overcome that and be confident and respectful despite, despite, Hope mm -hmm. it makes sense. That makes total sense. And yeah. so what, what it comes down to is like we're both, whether we are dark skinned women or light skinned women, we are essentially internalizing the same problem, like in the same way, but just having a different outcome. It's like I can't be confident because that's going to mean I think I'm better. You can't be confident because society says that beauty and femininity isn't for you. And it is ridiculous. It is a lie of the enemy. It is a like it is a system of oppression, of separation, of discord. And we just, to Shana, Shana's point, we come against it. We, we rebuke it. We free ourselves from it. You were made the way God intended you to be, fearfully and wonderfully. You are like, and thus, we are to be confident, to be bold, to be courageous, to be all that our God is to us and in us. Right. 
and insert whatever your thing is here, right? So of course, colorism is important because it then pits us against each other for no other reason but for what we can see. But I think if we take this conversation and, and we encourage everybody who's watching to insert facts, to insert disabled, to insert short hair, to insert, you know, fro versus cur curly hair, to insert introverted versus, versus extroverted, to insert you black, but you ain't got no booty, insert you black, but you can't cook, right? Insert whatever the stereotype that you are internalizing and reject that. To mm -hmm. insert that black people can't have healthy relationships. To insert that black men don't know how to get their lives together. To insert black women going to be single. Whatever stereotype that you have seen, that you have internalized, we reject that. Reject. In the name of that's not what Christ has done for us. Because there's always an antithesis. The antithesis of a single mom is a married mom. Of a fat person is a skinny person. Of a, you know, There's always an antithesis that people want to pit you against or that you compare yourself to. And that we reject that wholeheartedly and say, that is not our experience. And Amen. God help us to know how to combat that from a young age or it's not internalized and help us to really see if our children are going down that road, obviously subconsciously because they're children, but, and so they're not trying to create these lifelong traumas, but they can, it's, uh, um, similar to what she was saying and help us to nip that in the bud. No, ma'am, no, sir. And if you, and if you, if I see that you're doing it to somebody else, it's going to be me and you, right? Because you, we we don't have the space for that type of trauma. We got enough going on. Amen. We got enough going on. Yeah. The nipping it in the bud is key. And it makes me think of, you know, another point that I wanted to bring again, which is why I, I feel a sense of urgency around this is because we were sitting at the dinner table one evening and, and Addie looks at me and she says, I wish my skin was like yours so I could be pretty. Now, now, you know, my house, my house is everything black girl magic, like period. But because of the world she grows up in, you know, we are either it's like Jesus, education and pride in who you are. Like that is that's what we talk about. There's nothing else to discuss. But even still, and she's the only like of my four children, she has the darker skin. Um, So I, I imagine in her classroom, she's the only one. So it's just things that she's internalized, even when we are having these conversations. Mm -hmm. So I, I just cannot um, encourage us enough, enough, emphasize enough the importance of having the comfort. Like when you see a little black girl, I don't care what you she is, you better tell her she's beautiful. When you got an opportunity to gift any child a black book, a black baby doll, a black one, give it to them because that child, whether they're white, black, brown, yellow, they're going to be in a class with a little black girl who has somehow internalized this. And they just, we all need to have a sense of pride about blackness. We all need, exactly. we all need to know that every color is beautiful, but I won't know that if I'm a white woman down the street and I've never read a book with beautiful black children as the character. So, I mean, I think collectively we just got to get, get better. And we are going to talk um, about solutions before we, before we hop off. Let me yes. read some comments and then I'm going to share some statistics too. I'm not going to keep the fashion chase long. Um, <laughs> You know how to find her. She is a mighty woman of God. As you can see, we got a lot of yes when you hey were talking. Friends, hey friends. Thank y'all. <laughs> um, we need more people like you, ladies. Thank you, Josephine. Intelligent people who are self-aware don't engage in colorism. Facts. Um, Senekin's life. I hope I'm saying your um, handle correctly. All color is beautiful. I used to think because I wasn't as light as the next girl, I wasn't enough. But now God has shown me um, that black is beautiful for sure. Mm -hmm. Like you are more than yeah. enough. More and can we be honest? God wasn't, Jesus wasn't black, but he was Middle Eastern. He was brown. Yes. He was exactly. brown. You know, so he wasn't, you know, so come on, like he probably was probably a little bit darker than me or, you know, we think about Middle Eastern people specifically, it probably around my complexion. And the thing that kills me is like, Addie, Addie is, I would say she was brown. I wouldn't say that she was dark skin, right? But we are creating these things where it's like either or these extremes as, as a society, not, not you and I, but the general right. That we then have to walk back. And, and the answer is not to be like, girl, you're not dark, you're brown. But the answer is to be like, 
thank God for that. And when we have books or when we have exposure, when we have representation, represent the entire hue. It's not just either Beyonce or Naomi Campbell. Right. There's so many hues in the middle. I don't necessarily identify with either of those, but there's so many people. Taraji's more brown and Kerry mm -hmm. Washington is more brown. We have people now in our generation, but we have to keep an eye on the younger generation's representation, what Disney Channel has going on, what they watch on YouTube, to right. be sure that they actually can see themselves. Because to us, black is black, but they can cut it and slice it and differentiate to where if they don't see a box that they completely put themselves in, they count themselves out. Right. Like, we don't accept that either. That's good. That's good. I like they count. They don't see themselves in a box they can fit. They count themselves out. I like that. Um, let me just give us, I think we are all wise and aware people, um, but let me just give us some statistics to amp up our commitment to um, combating these stereotypes and creating a different narrative for ourselves and the women who are to come, the generations to come. Um, so this is just a scale of like average income for those average income. So a white person receives $15.94. A light-skinned person would receive $14.72 medium. So someone like Shana would receive $13.23. And then a dark person, $11.72. Wow. So we go, I mean, it's almost like a $4 difference between a white person and a dark person. That's like right. it's systemic, y'all. It is systemic. Um, darker tone people on average have a lower socioeconomic stat status. They have more punitive relationships with the criminal justice system. So um, longer sentences, harder um, punishments, et cetera. They um, on average have a dis diminished prestige. I'm gonna share the links in the description box of um, where the studies and that these statistics came from. Um, less likelihood of holding elective office. Now, I wanted to come back that because or respond to that. It says that darker skinned people are less likely to hold in a um hold an elective office. Yes, we know that in general black people are less likely to begin politics than white or like a big office seat mm -hmm. than white people. Thank God, Madam Vice President. Thank God, Barack Obama. You know, thank God, Stacey Abrams, all the people who are changing this narrative. But I feel as a kid, I grew up thinking or believing, feeling, seeing that the black people who were a power of dignity, of class and intellect were actually darker skin. Hmm. And whereas the lighter skinned people were only like in entertainment, like, yeah, we'll see you on the movie. We'll see you in the videos. We'll see you in the magazines, but you're not smart enough to do these other high up dignified things again, which is another reason why I worked hard in school because I was like, nah, like I'm going to be intelligent. So there's this, I, on the one side, there's the argument that lighter means you're more intelligent, but on the other side, there's, oh, light only means you pretty and that you can be used in entertainment yeah. or whatever. Um, all of it is just a lie and see how it like contradicts itself. Exactly. But exactly. So for me growing up, it was like, you know, I knew the Oprah Winfrey's of the world. I didn't know Shirley Chisholm, but I knew, you know, I studied her. Yeah. I knew of her. But so for me, it was like, yeah, dark skinned people are the intelligent, hard work and dignified people. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to say that a couple more statistics. Um, at the time of this particular study, twelve there were 12,000 African-American women in prison and the light-skinned women of that 12,000 did 13% less time than the darker skin. So going back to the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. And then that goes into dark-skinned girls are three times more likely to be suspended from school than light-skinned girls. And we know that those statistics get even like even more Come on. out of out of order out of this when we start talking about black boys. Yeah. But next week on the channel on live spiritually on Wednesday, I'm actually going live with Daily Dale. She was in the chats early and we are talking about raising black boys. So we'll probably get into that next week. And then the last statistic I want to share is just dark skin drivers are more likely to be pulled over and arrested. And as we know, um, more than arrested. Um, so yeah, those are just, just some statistics. Now, as we prepare to wrap up, 
what are what are some things that we can do what is our charge right what can we do to solve this we've talked about like we got to we we need more representation and we got to ensure that people are being exposed to diversity in books and toys like from a young age and movies and things they watch on online etc what are we know personally from Shana's point that we are going to reject insecurities reject stereotypes i love that you claimed that in the chat um sinekins sinekins i like saying it however you say it i like saying it <laughs> uh, yeah what are some other things that we can do i mean i think that as i work for a nonprofit, guys and so i and i used to work in corporate america and your mindset in corporate america has changed the world the mindset of nonprofit life has changed your corner of the world. And so I think that there is a gradation in that. And so starting with your corner of the world, like you said, if you see a black girl, compliment her about something. OK, if you see a black lady having a hard time, you know, see if you can talk to her, support black women, light and dark, because I would have thought that. I mean, maybe it's my personality, child. But if, if somebody put me on easy street, I'm just going to walk that street. You know, was like, I reject that street. I'm going to make sure y'all know it's a hard road. I'm like, chill out. Listen, and it's enough hard stuff in this world. Make it easy. But I understand that that's something that I never thought about. So ask yourself how that looks from their eyes and their perspective. Don't be afraid to ask the question. Say things out loud like, it's okay if you call, you know, I said all the time, like black is not a bad word. I am a black woman and give people permission to see it in their mind. Change that, that perspective because if somebody is hesitant to say she's dark skin, that means that they think it's inherently negative or they don't want you to think they're trying to be offensive. And so if you say dark skin ain't bad, being fat ain't bad, girl, nothing wrong with that. I, I accept that. That says in their mind, oh, I did see it as bad. I'm changing yeah. that narrative. And then if you have places and spaces at your job or in your own creative ways to have representation and then to make sure that that looks lots of different ways. My goddaughter is um, Hispanic and black and she looks like Moana and I buy her all types of dolls. I buy her dark skin dolls. I buy her Moana dolls. I buy her princess Jasmine dolls I buy, because I want her to know like all of these things are fun and exciting and worthy of praise and glory. And so her treasure chest of, of, of dolls, it just depends on who she sees that day. And so now she identifies every person like a doll that she loves and that's kind of a small thing but then yeah we we talk to our kids about it we watch shows with them about it we make sure that we speak up about it it's not something that we passively educate them on but we actively educate them on and then we educate ourselves as well and right we all those things work together um for changing our corner of the world and god willing if there's spaces that we can change the world in and of itself i love it and i just want to clarify that everything you just suggested is not just for black people like sure. no yes. like no if you are a white mom watching if you are you know a white woman white dad whatever and you happen to hear this or watch like no get your children the books you compliment black people you watch the things with your children and i, I feel like you know we just we say all the what it was a post early um recently and that somebody famous posted it uh, i can't remember but they said if my black child is old enough to experience racism, then your white child is old enough to learn about it. And I, I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more. It is necessary in order to see my daughters and understand my daughters, have compassion for my daughters, even at five and six. Mm -hmm. You need to understand their story you need to understand their identity who you need to see them fully and you can't see them if you are um or your kids can't see them if you've created a false narrative for them or a narrative you know or god forbid a negative narrative right. about black people and brown people and think about transracial adoption that happens all the time and you know it's not always if you adopt a child from africa so they don't have to have all brown dolls because now they're gonna think the only two things that look like either me or you with yes. a gamut of people and things in the middle um even barbie now has dolls that are disabled dolls that has amputees dolls that have no hair like really go in regarding that representation because Agreed. sometimes they're learning 
Okay, I may not have every doll of every single thing that could possibly happen, but now I'm not I'm not moved. I remember I took my niece, my my sister took my niece to Target, and there was a Muslim lady there, and so she had everything covered by her eyes, and my niece got so excited. She's like, "Oh my God, Mama, look at her!" Loud. Okay, first of all, mm-hmm. embarrassed. And mom was like, my sister was like, "Yes, darling," thinking my niece was trying to say, you know, "Look at her, I'm scared." And my sister's like, "Shit," my niece says, "She's a ninja. How cool, right?" <laughs> and and then we were all embarrassed. But mm-hmm. also, to her, there was nothing wrong. She wasn't scared. She wasn't intimidated. She thought she was a ninja. And that's the power of, you know, being exposed to lots of different things that you get excited about seeing something that's outside the norm. Right. It's not like different is bad. It's right. like, it's good, y'all. And we just, we need more of that. We just all need to be accepting and loving toward one another and we rob ourselves of so many experiences when we're like oh they practice that religion or they live over there or they dress like this or they're this color like we are missing out this is god's world and i mean satan trying to run rampant but you know the kingdom will be glorified um and so it is a reflection of of his art of his artwork, of his craftsmanship. Like we're so different because like our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. Like we can't begin to fathom his infinite greatness, his infinite understanding of beauty. So it's just, it takes all of us. And so I never want to exclude any type of person or one person or hue of a person. And I don't want my kids to either. I don't want the people who know me to either. So I like just being intentional in our, in our relationships with one another. Oh, God bless you. God got you, girl. Thank you so much, beautiful. Um, You know, I got all the thoughts and now I could like go on (laughs) about just what a blessing you are. Thank you so much. Um, Before we close, let me read Josephine's comment. She's um, saying that like this happens in all communities. So very true. Um, Definitely. I was either um, as preparing, there's an Asian woman talking about how, you know, for her, because ultimately they are women of color too, not South Asian, but she was a Asian woman. And she talked about how culturally they are told to stay away from other minorities and just draw to just the white people, be the minority who's the most hardworking and um, who's closest to white. And so she was come um, discussing so that we could like stop doing that. And she was an advocate, but it just spoke to what you're saying, Josephine, that like, this is prevalent in all communities. Yeah. Yeah. Right. To your point. Um, thanks Josephine. All right, ladies, I am so grateful that each of you took the time to tune in. Um, You're such a blessing and a gift. Make sure you, or I would love if you watch tomorrow's video, it comes out at 9 a.m. It is about healing after heartbreak. Um, And I think it's applicable regardless of your experience with heartbreak. And I mean, it doesn't have to be the end of a relationship, but um, yeah, I just hope you'll watch that video in the morning. Subscribe, like, share, do all that. Go to the Fashion Chase. Um, YouTube, and, Instagram, follow me, all the things. Yes, her channel is already linked in the description of this video. So you can head on over there now and go ahead and subscribe. Um, <laughs> I love y'all. We had some other YouTubers in the chat, Daily Dale subscribe obedience podcast um real girl food world um i i don't know who else is a youtuber on here but let's support 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 you know we let's do what we just talked about support one another uplift one another cherish and amplify one another all right y'all i'll see you in the morning thanks fashion chase bye guys thank you jasmine love to be here love you bye